I know you've been waiting for her. Hello everyone and welcome to this new video from Free Dreams 106 channel. Today we are back talking about new 3D printers with the new machine from Anycubic, the highly anticipated Anycubic Cobra S1. In this case, combo. So in this video we will look at the unboxing, uh, the first impressions and first print I've made with this uh, Cobra S1 and in the meantime I will also talk to you uh, about its technical specifications. So let's cut the chase and get into it. Let's start by talking about the unboxing. The printer in question is the Cobra S1 Combo, so the printer plus the multicolor unit package. The box you will get uh, will be quite heavy, <laughs> I anticipate. However, it is packaged beautifully. Anycubic has designed the package um, so that the machine is well protected by several layers of foam. The S Pro, which is any cubic multicolor unit, is shipped inside the machine if you purchase the combo package. Unboxing and preparing the machine for the first print is very simple. Uh, once we take the Cobra S1 out of the outer box, we can remove the plastic that surrounds it, along with the foam layers. Then we can proceed by unscrewing a couple of screws that hold the Ace Pro attached to a plastic frame designed to protect the machine during shipping. Now you can pull out the multicolor unit and the small box that contains the accessories for the Cobra S1. To remove the plastic structure we only need to unscrew four more screws and unlocking the head and printing plate is also very easy. In fact we can remove a zipper and a piece of cardboard to unlock the head and three screws for the plate. If you have the multicolor unit the last step is to connect it to the printer. Otherwise, you can install the spool holder on the back of the machine. Now comes the satisfying part, removing all the protective films. And voila, the Any Cubic S1 is ready for the first print. It shouldn't take you more than 30 minutes uh, from unboxing to the first print run. Everything is well documented in the manual that comes with the Cobra S1. Now we can have some fun. So let's start by looking at some prints and some of the technical specifications. As you can see from the video, the Cobra S1 arrives with a camera installed that will allow you to make some beautiful time lapses and also monitor your prints remotely. I don't know about you, but honestly, I tend to add a camera to all my machines because it allows me to check the print when I um, walk away from the machine so I'm more uh, uh, comfortable and obviously it helps me um, recording clips for my videos. So for me it's a plus to have the camera already installed. Coming to the prints I selected both larger objects and smaller models to really test the performance of this machine. Let's start with the very first uh, test print that I uh, I've done, which is the bottle opener uh, shark, and it is included in the USB uh, drive that comes with the machine. But I want to point out uh, uh, something. This file has been made available for both PLA, PETG and also ABS, which in my opinion is a very interesting detail. So the first print of the shark came out really well in my opinion and also allowed me to check out uh, um, that everything was working properly. And you can already see one of the best features of these printers, that is the self-leveling, which is super precise. I think uh, uh, you also know the frustration of a null leveled plate uh, producing bad first layers and uh, uh, detaching uh, models from the plate. So uh, the Cobra S1 will have no such problems. In fact, I even printed uh, small and thin things uh, that I will show you in a moment and I had uh, no issue at all with the bad adhesion or uh, um, warping. 
This is because the Cobra S1 uh, comes with both self-leveling and automatic Z-offset calibration, which I personally love. I bring you uh, uh, as an example this little leaf that uh, I made for a necklace. I wanted to show it to you to um, showcase how accurate the self-leveling is. In fact, this model has an intricate pattern with thin outlines that are perfect candidates for bad adhesion problems. But the Cobra S1 didn't have any problem uh, printing it successfully. If you are wondering what the print size of this machine is, I can tell you that this little beast has a print build volume, because we are talking about 250mm cubed, so a little bit bigger than the uh, normal 220 uh, millimeters. Also, this structure is very different from a classical um, printer because this machine is a Core XY. For those who don't know what a Core XY printer is, I will not go into much detail to avoid boring you, but I will explain in a very simple way. The Core XY is a system in which the movement on the X and Y axis are not controlled by two independent motors with independent belts, but rather a single system of motors and belts. This is a feature of more advanced machines that until a few years ago was only available on um, uh, build, build at home printers such as Borons. The system offers greater accuracy, uh, especially when printing at high speeds compared to the uh, Cartesian style printers. In fact, this printer can reach up to 600 mm at second of speed and 20,000 uh, mm per second squared of acceleration. Pretty press impressive numbers. Also, the plate won't move back and forth uh, like on a bend slinger, but rather up and down. This means that the print will be more stable because it will not be dragged horizontally. And this uh, is a great thing, and I will show you with this print that is an incense holder with a tall cylinder and a uh, thin base. This is the perfect candidate to um, showcase bad adhesion problems and I didn't have any issue on my Cobra S1 so I'm really pleased with this result and also the surface is really smooth and I really like the final quality. I think this slightly silk uh, rainbow filament uh, fits this uh, print perfectly. What do you say? But now you might have noticed another feature uh, that makes the Cobra S1 very different from more classical open printers, which is the enclosure. The Cobra S1 in fact is an enclosed printer that is also designed to print technical materials in addition to the most classical PLA, PETG and TPU. The hotend in fact reaches 320 degrees and the bed reaches 120 degrees. Unlikely um, similar machines usually reach up to 300 degrees for the hotend and 100 maximum 110 uh, degrees for the bed. So there's a pretty big difference, I would say. Speaking of technical materials, I think the whole ecosystem has been designed for uh, more complex and resistant materials. In fact, the Ace Pro, the multicolor unit, uh, is also a dryer. So you can dry your filament while printing it. And once you have no moisture left in the spool, you can leave the filaments in the dryer to avoid um, to keep them dry. This is not to be underestimated because uh, um, dryers for force pools are rare and they are pretty expensive. So for the same cost uh, with the Ice Pro, you get both a multicolor unit and a dryer. Honestly, I prefer my Cobra S1 to my K1, for, especially for technical materials, because the K1 leveling is not super precise, while the Cobra S1 leveling is spot on and uh, it's perfect for more complex materials such as ABS that tend to warp. In addition to that, the uh, Cobra arrives with an included charcoal filter which will partially allow you uh, to purify the air when uh, printing. 
these technical materials. Well, now that I've talked you about the most important specifications of this printer, we can take a look at some other prints. I wanted to test adhesion on some larger models, so I've chosen another incense holder and um, it was made up of two pieces. As you might see, these don't present warp at all and I'm very pleased with this result because when talking about larger pieces like this, it's really easy to have warping or adhesion problems. So I would say test past. But come on, do you want to see one of my best prints that I've made with this Cobra? I think so. So this is the Capitan Arlock Arcadia in all its beauty. This print took almost the entire height of the Cobra S1. In fact, the uh, upper half was uh, a little bit over 22 centimeters and uh, it printed beautifully. I also took the opportunity to test the multicolor and uh, the Ace Pro works flawlessly. Small spoiler, I plan to connect a second multicolor unit to get to print up to eight filaments at the same time. So I suggest you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming videos. I'm very pleased honestly with how the Arcadia turned out and there are some imperfections due to a high speed profile that I found on internet that was not properly optimized I would say. But uh, you will see in the other prints that the quality of the print is flawless. So, I would definitely suggest you go with the standard uh, profile included on any cubic next slicer. I want to show you some other prints as well that I've made so you can better appreciate the quality of the machine. For example, I couldn't uh, uh, avoid printing some projects created with UForge. In particular, I opted for three bookmarks that turned out very well, I would say. As you know well from my um, UForge series, a model made with this software doesn't need a multicolor unit, but I would say having it is super convenient. <laughs> In this way, I was also able to test the pose function, since all these bookmarks uh, required five colors. And I can confirm that the Cobra S1 had no problem resuming uh, the print after the pose. Keep in mind that the multicolor prints um, need some purging, so this means that the machine will extrude this, uh, some material uh, when changing from a filament to another to make sure that the Ostend is clean. You can set the desired amount of purging directly from the printer's touchscreen. Purging is done in the rear hand of the machine and I recommend that you print yourself a basket, as I did, uh, to collect the uh, material that comes out. Otherwise, you will have plastic balls all over your house. You can find several bins on Maker Online, which is the 3D model website of Anycubic, and I highly suggest you check it out because you will find a lot of ready-made files for the Cobra S1. All you have to do is click on open in any cubic slicer next and you will have pretty much all the work done. This is a great feature in my opinion, especially if you are starting out uh, or if you want to check out uh, the settings of someone who has already printed a particular model. I've been using the Ace Pro for multicolor prints for almost a year now and it's worked so great honestly. Because uh, the filaments are controlled independently and all the individual tubes arrive at the central hub, filament changing is very fast compared to the competitors. The last print I want to show you today is a fairly large project, I would say. And in fact, I print all the parts for this engine model right on the any cubic Cobra S1. It was quite a few parts and quite a few hours of print, I would say but I'm extremely happy with how this turned out. Plus, I had the chance to test the accuracy of this printer, uh, given all the screws and the joints on the model, and I'm happy to report that all the parts were perfect. I'm honestly really enjoying this machine, and I think the self-auto-leveling and automatic Z-offset calibration are super convenient. And 
a very important thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is quiet. It is quiet. If you have tried similar 3D printers before, you know very well how much noise they make. And for me personally, having it in the room where I study and work is quite annoying. So having the Cobra S1 being so quiet is definitely, definitely a big plus for me. And is not only quieter than my K1, but also my Cobra 3. So big thumbs up for that. <laughs> I've not told you um, the price yet. You can buy the Cobra S1 alone for $449 or the combo with the multicolored unit for $599. I would say that's a fantastic price considering all the technical features. I will of course leave all the links down in the description below and in case you are interested in buying it, if you are using my affiliate link you will give a huge hand to the channel uh, without spending any additional penny. So a thank in advantage those who will use my link. There is also another whole set of details that I really appreciate about this machine. For example, any cubic next slicer is this slicer that comes with the, this um, printer and it's a fork of Orca, that is the slicer I mainly use. So I really appreciate that. The printer connects to the internet and you can send files to it directly from this slicer. There is also the option to use the application with the cloud, but you know I'm not a fan of that, so I haven't used it myself personally. On the base of the printer there is also a very convenient channel, let's say, uh, that makes uh, it uh, extremely easy to clean the printer. If you are cleaning the plate and you drop some residue, it is super easy to remove it. The touchscreen can be tilted at will and the door uses a spring mechanism, so when you press it, it will stay. This is very useful to avoid unpleasant accidents, I would say. And as you have seen, there's also an LED light that illuminates the machine and it's very convenient for checking prints and doing maintenance. In short, uh, what can I say? I sincerely feel, fell in love with this machine and it's aesthetically beautiful and has very good spe technical specifications. So in all honesty, I, have, I haven't found any problems while using it and uh, I haven't found any issues to report. So let me know down in the comments what you think of the new Anycubic Cobra S1 and in the meantime, if you like this video, you might also like this one.